Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Great Garment Graphics webinar presented by Transfer Express. For those of you who have joined us before, welcome back. We're glad to have you back again. And if this is your first rodeo with us, my name is Andy. I am from Transfer Express, and I am happy to join you today to present how to decorate different apparel types. Uh, no doubt you have uh, been out there and seen some of these crazy things that come out these days. Uh, I was joking right before the webinar started that 10 years ago, we wouldn't really have needed to have a webinar like this because the garment types you hear about all the time are cotton, polyester, and maybe nylon on occasion. That was it. This day and age, though, things have changed quite a bit. There's, there's garment types out there that, that come out every day that, uh, that make you sit there and go, oh, gosh, I've never heard of that one before. So uh, a big thank you right off the bat to the marketing people here at Transfer Express for helping put together this fantastic presentation and our, uh, our two stars of our webinar, Kayla and Kyle, our two, uh, our two mannequins here. So anyway, we're going to get started here. Um, before we officially start with the uh, where to start, though, uh, as always, I want to do two poll questions real fast just to get an idea of um, our demographic here and who's, who's joining us. So Jody, if you're with us, can you go ahead and run that first poll question? Yes, welcome Andy, and I would also like to extend a warm welcome to those of us joining the webinar, to those of you joining the webinar today. Um, the first poll question, which apparel type are you most asked to decorate? And we just got some of the basic selections here, but this is going to give us an idea, uh, just well give me an idea of, of where you're all coming from, so I got a, got a, a good point of reference here. And I will close the poll in just about five more seconds. Okay. So it looks like still mostly polyester with some spandex, PK, polypropylene, and zero bamboo. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, that's good to know. I, I'm somehow not surprised by those results, but that's that's good to know. Okay. Um, and then we've got one more poll question, Jody, if you'd run that one. Absolutely. When you are unsure of how to decorate an item, what are you most likely to do? This is a great question, too, because I think we've all been in that scenario at some point or another where you're faced with a garment type that you seriously have no idea what it is or have no idea where to even start. So it's it's interesting for us to know how you guys go about doing that. Where do you start? Where do you, what do you do? Well, most people call you for help, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, that's a good thing. All right. 21% wing it, 18% call the manufacturer, and 6% unfortunately have to say no. Oh, geez. Okay. Well, I want that 6% of you, the 6% of you out there, I want you guys attention today because we're going to we're going to cover hopefully my goal is to cover just about every type of garment you guys could get out there now obviously like I said the market is huge today and to cover every type of garment we'd be here for probably an hour and 45 minutes as opposed to just 45 minutes but um, we're going to cover as much ground as we can today now if you join me before you know I could talk kind of quickly um, we have a lot of slides today, so hopefully I cover everything in enough detail that everyone gets it. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask in the comments section. And if I do not answer your questions right now during the webinar, you know that I will definitely get to them afterwards. You'll get an individual email from us with the answer to whatever question you might have. But uh, so let's let's start out with this. If you have a garment that you're not familiar with, something you haven't worked with before, the question is where do you even start? Where where is the where is the starting line here? Um, the first thing you want to do is sort out the material type versus the brand name or marketing descriptions. Meaning, when you're presented with a garment, there are so many words out there in our industry, in the garment industry. There's so many words that don't actually mean a lot of stuff. There's words that are referring to uh, uh, brand names and marketing things versus what is the material. Okay, and we're going to talk about what some of those words are today, but things like moisture wicking, dry fit, antibacterial. 
those are words that are used just to sell a shirt, and they don't actually mean anything to you, the person who's decorating the garment. Okay, at least not a lot. So when you're trying to decide where to start, get past those words. Get past moisture wicking, dry fit, antibacterial, antimicrobial, that kind of stuff. Get past that. Those words don't matter when we're trying to decide how to decorate. The next thing that we need to look at is fabric features. What does your fabric do? What, what is the weird thing or the unique thing about the fabric? Is it stretchy? Is it a rib knit? Is it brightly colored? Maybe it's sublimated. Um, that's the next step is to figure out what, what features your garment has. What are any special characteristics that your garment has? That helps us determine how to decorate on that garment. Once you've got those pieces of information, what type of material, not wicking, not dry fit, not anti-anything, once you've got your type of material and your fabric features, what's special about it, then you call our team and ask for help. If you somehow manage to stump one of our customer service reps, God forbid, then myself and the other team leaders were always nearby. We will always have an answer for you. The answer will never be, we have no We will always tell you what the best course of action is. And if worse comes to absolute worse, and you have something that truly is unique or truly is different, we can always send you samples to give it a try beforehand. Okay? So without further ado, let's get started here. And of course, where best to start <laughs> other than with cotton? Now, cotton is probably the garment type that we almost don't even need to include here. Everyone's used it. We've all printed on it at some point or another. Um, what I thought was sort of interesting is a statistic that I found in a recent poll on the Internet is that cotton is still the most common fi uh, fiber worn in the United States. So that's kind of interesting. We're all still buying and wearing cotton more than anything else. And the most important thing about cotton is that all of the products that we carry, all of our products work on cotton fantastically, um, whether we're talking screen print or we're talking CAD print digital products, everything works on cotton. So cotton is, is still one of those standbys. Now, there's always, of course, going to be the people who have preferences uh, versus 50-50 t-shirts or polyester. I personally, I'm a 50-50 guy, but um, cotton is still one of the most versatile fibers in our industry, and generally any, any product you get from Transfer Express, anything will work on cotton. So cotton is, is always that uh, stalwart standby. But we're all familiar with cotton, so we don't have to go into too much detail here. Uh, the next one we're looking at is some definitions of, of cotton. Now, there's so many, so many vocabulary words in our industry, and, and it's sort of funny. We actually put together these vocabulary words for our customer service reps when they first start uh, start working here at Transfer Express. And these vocabulary words they apply to different types of fabrics, as you're going to see today. For example, the word twill. The word twill is not a uh, an independent fabric by itself, twill is made from either cotton or polyester. Twill actually refers to the weave of the garment. Okay, So when you hear twill, don't think that it's its own fabric type aside from cotton or polyester. Uh, twill is made from either cotton or polyester. Um, and again, uh, just like anything else, if you get past those vocabulary words like cotton twill, well, get past the twill, you still got cotton. And again, any transfer, screen print or digital, applies to cotton. Same thing with piquet you see below here. Piquet is an interesting, again, it's a weave. It's made from cotton. It's not its own fabric. It's not its own special type of fabric. It's simply a weave from cotton. So if you hear the phrase, cotton piquet, get past the piquet part, you've simply got cotton. And again, any type of transfer will apply to cotton. The one little side note you'll see on the piquet slide here is that it's woven in such a fashion that the surface of the garment has lots of nooks and crannies. It's almost got a rough look, like a piece of canvas. Because of this, because of this texture, fine detail in your transfer is not a good idea. If you do have a very fine detailed piece of artwork that does need to go on a piquet garment, you're going to want to go the route of digital, of CAD prints. And, and, I, and I, I do have a correction, you're right, uh, piquet is knitted, not, not woven, I apologize. But um, 
regardless, the piquet is something you're going to want to use uh, CAD print if you have a lot of detail. You can put screen print on it, but you need to make sure your screen print does not have a lot of tiny detail before doing so. Okay, so again, twill and piquet are just vocabulary words that you don't want to don't want to hang you up. You don't want those words to be the thing that throws you off when you're doing decorating. Twill and piquet just refer to cotton garments or polyester garments. So you, you get past those words and find out, okay, it's twill, that's great, but what is the type of fabric, cotton or polyester? Speaking of polyester, um, polyester is uh, again, right up there with cotton, it's one of those standbys. Uh, polyester is a synthetic fabric, and it is something that uh, is manufactured. It, it revolutionized the garment industry when polyester began to so be used in the garment industry. Um, polyester does not fade. It does not wrinkle. It is naturally water resistant to some degree or another. Um, and what you're going to find in our industry a lot is garment manufacturers will mix polyester with other fibers. Uh, for its benefits because of that water resistant, wrinkle resistant, fade resistant. Um, you'll also find that polyester is used to make other types of fabrics just like cotton is used to make piquet and twill. Uh, polyester is used to make dazzle, sateen, taffeta, and we're going to talk about all that just a little bit later. You can find in everything and anything. Um, now, ten years ago, the with polyester is, ooh, is it going to melt? Is it going to melt? Is it going to is it going to melt when I heat press it? I think polyester has been around enough years now that uh, all of us in the decoration industry we all know that polyester is not going to melt generally. Um, if you have a polyester performance wear or a poly dazzle jersey, we know it's not going to melt. It's, you know, it can withstand temperatures of over 365 degrees. Again, just like the cotton. All of our products work on polyester. Now, we'll break it down in just a second here and talk about some of the variations of polyester, but uh, for the most part, again, whether it's screen print or digital, anything will work on polyester. It's uh, that standby right up there with cotton. So let's talk about some differences here with uh, polyester. For example, performance wear. Uh, performance wear is some vocabulary words you actually want to keep an ear out for because performance wear is just a, a little different. Um, with performance wear, you'll hear words like compression fit. Now, the whole point of performance wear, if you're not familiar, the whole point of performance wear is to have a garment that pulls the sweat away from your skin. So these are good for uh, sporting goods, different uh, baseball, football, joggers, runners, cross country, track, that kind of stuff. Um, it pulls the sweat away from your skin. And uh, a lot of high-end performance wear will then also have antibacterial coatings, antimicrobial coatings, that kind of thing, to prevent, uh, to prevent smell, that sort of thing, from the sweat uh, being wicked away from the skin. Um, this helps make uh, uh, different people playing sports, this helps them make, make them more comfortable. So um, now, years ago, we didn't see a lot of people decorate wear, but something over the last three, four years, we've definitely a lot more. So people are actually just not even layering the performance wear anymore. They're just wearing it. It's something that they're wearing on the outside as opposed to putting it under your jersey. So uh, when you're decorating performance wear, something you want to keep an ear out for is compression fit. Compression fit means that it's going to be something tight that's going to suck up against the skin. Compression fit means it's, it's going to be worn tight against the skin, almost like a second layer of skin. So if you have something that's compression fit, it's going to need to stretch. Whatever you use to decorate that garment, that decorating method is going to need to stretch. Okay. For example, Under Armour compression fit sportswear. That's probably the most common version that you'll see, that you'll hear about, is the Under Armour. Um, but there are other types of compression fit out there. When you get those, when your customers need those decorated, you're going to want to go with Elasti Prints or CAD Prints Opaque. Those are our two products that do stretch the most. Now, when you have one of those garments, make sure to identify that to the customer service rep, and then we'll guide you through some steps to figure out if ElastiPrint is better or if CAD Print Opaque is better, because again, each product has its own different, uh, its own different uh, pluses and minuses. 
But again, performance wear is not something to shy away from, and I know that is a type of garment that does make people nervous sometimes. Don't shy away from it. Don't be afraid to decorate these. Uh, and for those unfamiliar, Elasti Prints is our screen print version of Stretch product. Uh, Elasti Print is screen print, and then CAD Prints is our digital option. Okay. So Elasti Prints has the same features as screen printing does. It's uh, it's a plastisol based ink. It does have a soft feel to it, but again, it's it's screen print, just like you get at a screen printer's. To where CAD Prints, for those unfamiliar, CAD Prints is a digital media that is printed onto a piece of white film, and then that white film is cut out. So for example, uh, if you're looking at the pictures here, uh, Kyle here in the green, he's wearing CAD prints opaque. So that is the digital media to where Kayla, next to him in the light blue, Kayla is wearing, okay, just to get some visual differences there. There we go. Uh, polyester mesh is another one you're going to hear about from time to time. Now, there's some vocabulary words with polyester mesh that throw people off sometimes, in my experience. These words are porthole, mini, and micro. These are three words that are simply used to describe the size of the mesh. You can have polyester porthole mesh, polyester mini mesh, polyester micro mesh, or nylon portable mesh, nylon mini mesh, nylon micro mesh. So when you're hearing the words porthole, mini, or micro, those aren't words you should be concerned about right off the bat. Your first question when you hear mini mesh or micro mesh, your first question should be, is it polyester micro mesh or nylon micro mesh? So in this example, on this slide, we're talking about polyester micro mesh. Um, now, Getting aside from the micro, the mini, and the porthole, it's still polyester. So the same decorating options are still viable for you. Okay. So since it's polyester, we can still use the screen print or the CAD print, completely dependent upon your choice. Now, the one little bit of weirdness when you're dealing with mesh of any kind is the size of the holes and what's going to happen in the holes. One of the questions we get all the time is, if I put screen print on mesh, are the holes going to poke through or not? Now, that comes down to semantics like the size of your design, what type of artwork are you doing, how detailed is your artwork. Um, if your goal is for the holes not to pop through, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Okay, um, you're going to want to make sure if you are dealing with porthole mesh, the larger holes, make sure your design is bold. Make sure it's something that is going to stick well to those big, big open holes. You're not going to want to put something with a tiny little flowery detail. You're not going to want to put that on porthole mesh because it's not going to have anything to stick to. The, the portholes are very large. So again, uh, when you're dealing with polyester mesh, and, and the marketing department's done a great job of putting together all three types here. You're looking at porthole mesh, mini mesh, and micro mesh. And you can see um, Kyle in the big picture at the very top here, Bayside Tigers, Kyle's wearing the CAD prints. So the CAD print works perfectly fine on the porthole mesh, looks great. Um, the zoom in on the rear side of the mesh, you see uh, the number 30. Um, down at the bottom left-hand corner here, that is done with our goof proof. That's done with our easy print numbers. So again, the goof proof is screen print. It works just fine on the polyester mesh. Okay, And then the gray shorts you see here in the picture, these are, I believe, mini mesh. And again, the goof proof pictured on there. So words like mini, micro, porthole, you shouldn't be worried about those words in terms of what to use as far as what to transfer type to decorate. Don't let those words throw you off. Those words are just descriptions of the size of the holes. So continuing along that vein, uh, different, different uh, vocabulary words and polyesters, what everything means, uh, one word that we hear a lot at Transfer Express that our customers say to us when we ask them what type of garment are they using is denier. Denier uh, technically is a French word that, that's pronounced denier, but uh, denier is a unit of measurement that indicates how fine the weave of material is. So if you get a number, uh, uh, for example, 200 denier, the number is a reference to the weight of the fabric. So the higher the number, the heavier the weave. 
the lower number, the lower the weave. So for example, you could have an a industrial canvas awning that's going to be a couple hundred denier. Or you could have a ladies nylon that's two or three or four denier, for example. So denier is just a unit of measurement in terms of how heavy the weave is. Denier should never be a word that you associate with, oh, how should I decorate this garment? Denier does not affect that decision. Okay. Now, along those same terms, you've got microfiber. Microfiber refers to a fiber that's so thin and so light that it's less than one denier. Okay. Microfiber can be made from polyester, Nomex, nylon, or a combination of those materials. So the lesson to be learned here, folks, is that when you hear the words denier or microfiber, those don't directly affect you. Get past those words and find out, okay, microfiber, that's great, but is it polyester microfiber? Is it nylon microfiber? What exactly is it? Okay. If you call us up and place an order with us here at Transfer Express and you tell a representative that it's microfiber, that's going to be our question is, okay, well, is it poly or nylon or Nomex or what type of microfiber is it? So when you do have a garment that is microfiber or that has the word denier in it, the question that we're always going to have for you is, that's great, but what type of fabric is the makeup? So uh, down here at the bottom under product choice, you'll see we've made that note, where if you hear the word polyester during any of these garments, if you hear polyester microfiber or it's a certain denier polyester, that's fine. That doesn't change what you can use on it. Our screen print, our CAD print, all of our products will work just fine. If it's nylon, if you hear nylon microfiber or a certain denier nylon, that's when you're going to want to use CAD prints. Okay. So again, the lessons to be learned is denier and microfiber are not words that should scare you away. They're not words that are going to determine what you use to decorate the garment. What's important is whether it's polyester or nylon or Nomex, and we'll talk about Nomex in just a minute here. Sublimation. Sublimation is really cool. This is one of those interesting things. When I first entered the industry very many years ago, I found the concept of sublimation so interesting. I, I was so intrigued by how, how it works and how they do it. Um, the downside to sublimation is it can be dangerous for a garment decorator. Now, again, I know many years ago the word sublimation is something that would scare people away. People weren't sure what to do with it, how do you decorate on it, short of embroidery. Um, today, it's very easy to print on sublimation, sublimated garments. You just need to make sure ahead of time that it's sublimated. You need to be aware of that. Um, now, for those of you unfamiliar, sublimation is a process that's actually a, a dye process, a gaseous process, where uh, sort of a, a gas is used to actually dye the fabric. Okay. Now, what's unfortunate about sublimated garments, as gorgeous and beautiful as they are, as you can see the one in the picture here, Kyle's wearing a really cool sublimated, I think that's probably a soccer jersey, would be my guess. Um, the downside is that dye that's used bleeds quite badly. And you'll see at the bottom of my slide here, we've defined what dye migration or bleeding is. Dye migration or bleeding is when you've got a garment that's got a lot of dye in it, like a sublimated garment, you decorate that garment with, let's say, some screen print, a screen print and transfer, goof proof. The, the dye migration process is when the goof proof transfer starts to pick up the dye from that garment. So in this example here, Kyle's wearing that red and black garment. If we had used just a plain goof proof transfer, that big white V you see there would have turned black or gray even, or, or even red. There's red dye in there too. Dye migration, or bleeding, that's the nickname for the term bleeding, is when a transfer picks up those colors from the garment. Dye migration will always occur on a sublimated garment. I, I've seen it happen sometimes where you can press a white goof-proof transfer on a sublimated garment, and it will look perfectly fine for maybe the first day or so. But as you let that garment sit and it begins to absorb more and more of that dye, it's amazing. I, I had more than one customer who has put white goof proof on a black 
sublimated garment. They let it sit, and over the weekend, they come back on Monday, and you've got actually, instead of a, a black transfer, your transfer has turned a shade of brown or a shade of gray. So, uh, again, sublimation is something you need to watch out for. That's one of those buzzwords where when you hear sublimation or sublimated, you should hear warning bells. When you hear a garment is sublimated, that means you have to look for a specific type of transfer. And as you see under product choice here, our sublock is the best thing to go with that. Sublock is the best type of transfer to go on sublimation. It's called sublock. It's a uh, type of CAD print, so that means it's a digital media. It's, it's a type of CAD print that has a special layer of film that prevents dye migration, that prevents the bleeding from happening. So when you have a sublimated garment, if you have something that has been dyed that way, you want to get sublock. Okay? And again, if you are talking to our customer service reps and you identify that it is a sublimated garment, we'll guide you to the sublock to begin with. You just have to be familiar enough with your garment. And uh, another good tip, and I know I, I left it off the slide here, but a great tip, if you're not sure if you have something that's sublimated, because we've had people ask us that too, if you're not sure, look on the inside of the garment. For example, the one Kyle's wearing in this picture, if we were to look on the inside the inside out, the inside of his garment, we would see that the inside is solid white. It's only the outside of the garment that has been dyed this cool red and black color. So that's always a dead giveaway to a garment that's sublimated, is if you look on the inside and you see that it's white in there, then you know you're dealing with something being sublimated. So just, just something to watch out for. Acrylic. Acrylic is a type of garment. We don't see a lot of this. Um, it's usually used in hats, uh, scarves, uh, sweaters, that sort of thing. Acrylic is a synthetic fiber, meaning man-made, and it's, it was meant to mimic uh, expensive fibers like wool fibers or cashmere fibers. Acrylic is one of those things that was made to substitute for things that were more expensive and more high-end. This is meant to be a cheaper alternative to those fabrics. The downside to acrylic is it's a tad cheap. Um, it does fray easily. It does pill a little bit. Um, so acrylic's not something you're going to see a heck of a lot of. Here at Transfer Express, we see a lot of acrylic from our customers in terms of the knit caps and the occasional acrylic sweater. The downside to applying on this type of garment is that in the manufacturing process for acrylic fiber, heat is used. So if you heat these garments at high temperatures, you can actually permanently warp the shape of the fabric. So you have to be very careful when you're doing acrylic garments. Now, we had a uh, girl in our office, actually, one of our reps, who was not completely familiar with acrylic way back when. She ordered a whole bunch of acrylic caps and was going to apply them for her son's, I believe it was a ski trip, something to that effect. And unfortunately, she discovered that the particular type of acrylic hat she purchased, when she tried to heat press, it warped so much that the transfer wouldn't actually adhere to it. We had a heck of a time getting the transfers to stick to those acrylic hats. So when you do have an acrylic garment, you're going to want to test it ahead of time. That means call us up here, get a sample of our CAD prints, get a sample of our screen print goof proof, and give it a try yourself. Take a scrap acrylic garment, buy an extra hat, see what works on it. Now, we did eventually get transfers to stick to it. I believe we ended up having to use the CAD prints. But um, it, again, you're going to want to be careful. When you hear a word like acrylic, that something you can decorate, it can be done. You just have to be careful about it. And again, for the webinar, a lot of these types of fabric you're going to find are mixed in with our normal fabrics like polyester and cotton. You'll find garments that are partially acrylic, a percentage acrylic. When you have those, you should be less worried about that. If it's not 100%, then you have less a chance of having any problems. It's still best to test just to be safe, but if you've got something that's got polyester and acrylic fibers, you're probably in the clear there. But again, Always test just to be safe. Bamboo and jute. These are two of my, my favorite fabrics, only because this is these are symbols of how our industry, the garment industry, is evolving. And it's, it's kind of cool for uh, at least someone like me. We've 
I've been in the industry for so many years, it's neat to sit back and to see fibers like these come onto the market because it shows how we're changing, we're evolving, and we're, we're becoming a greener society in some ways. And that's what jute and bamboo are. These are two types of fabrics that are, uh, they're more eco-friendly. The manufacturers have an easier time making these in terms of uh, chemicals and processing and that kind of thing. Um, bamboo is exactly what it sounds like. Bamboo is actually made from bamboo fibers, and I found that, again, I, I found it very fascinating when I was doing the research for this. I, I did a, probably a little bit more reading on bamboo than I needed to do, but um, you're going to see bamboo used a lot in socks, scarves, and shirts. Bamboo, generally, you're not going to have a 100% bamboo garment. Usually you're going to find, in our industry at least, you're going to find bamboo mixed with cottons. Generally, uh, bamboo is cool because it has a natural moisture wicking, uh, just like the performance wear we talked about earlier. Bamboo naturally absorbs moisture and pulls away from the skin. Bamboo is also interesting because it also has a natural tendency to make a garment odorless. Um, so bamboo is a really interesting fiber. Jute is, jute is interesting because I had not heard of it initially until one of our customers came to us and said, hey, I've got these jute tote bags that I need to press. And of course, our, our reps hadn't heard of this before. They came to me and I did a little bit of research and uh, jute's actually a really interesting fiber. It's a vegetable fiber, again, all natural, just like bamboo. And um, it's very coarse, it's a lot like canvas. And we're seeing a lot of use for it in our industry in tote bags, like you see Kaylee wearing here, or Kayla, sorry, uh, like you see Kayla wearing here in the picture. Um, both jute and bamboo are natural fibers, and they should be treated like canvas or cotton, depending on the type of garment. For example, the purple garment you see Kayla wearing in the picture, it's half bamboo, half spandex. So when you hear the words bamboo or jute, you shouldn't be worried by those because you can put any type of garment or any type of transfer rather on those garments. Now in the example Kayla's wearing the purple, it's half bamboo, half spandex. Because of that, we did use the CAD print opaque because spandex is stretchy. The garment was a tad stretchy, so we used something that can accommodate that stretch. In the tote bag you see Kayla carrying in the other picture here, the Chapin Equestrian Center, uh, the jute bag is uh, very simply just a goof-proof transfer. Okay? So again, both of these types of garments do not shy away from them, do not be afraid of them. They're very easy to apply on. If the uh, shirt that Kayla's wearing in the top picture, the purple shirt, if that had not been spandex, if it had been bamboo and cotton, for example, we could have easily put a screen print on that instead. In the example here, we simply used CAD print because it has a bit of a stretch to it. So, uh, and then again, the other neat thing about this, if your customers come to you and they're asking for some kind of eco-friendly or uh, green is the term we hear all the time. I know you can't see me making air quotes with my fingers, but that's what I'm doing. Um, if you're looking, uh, customers looking for a green product, bamboo and jute are two fantastic green products to, to go towards. So, uh, interesting stuff for sure. Now, you've heard me say the word canvas a couple times now. Um, canvas, originally, if you want to go back historically, and history is a, a topic I, I happen to enjoy a lot, um, if you go back historically, canvas was first made out of hemp. Today, canvas is more commonly made out of cotton. Now, uh, original uses would include tents, tarps, bags, or even painting. Uh, uh, artists would paint upon canvas. Um, today, you'll see canvas used in backpacks. Uh, martial arts uniforms is a really popular use, too. We have a lot of customers, a lot of martial arts customers that uh, work with canvas exclusively. Now, um, specifically, anything will stick to canvas. Anything will adhere to it, whether we're talking our screen print or we're talking our digital processes, the CAD print opaque and such, anything will stick to it. Um, but generally, when you're doing screen print, you're going to want to stick to goof proof. Our goof proof transfers are a little bit better because our other transfer types are going to want to spread. Our other transfer types are going to want to soak into it. And if you've worked with canvas before, you know that canvas, depending on what you're working with, canvas can be rough. It can be coarse. It can have lots of nooks and crannies and such. So you need to make sure you're using a transfer type that will deal with those nooks and crannies. So you don't want something that's going to spread 
if you try to use one of our other transfer types, for example, hot split. Hot split on canvas is not the best idea because hot split is going to want to soak into all those little nooks and crannies. And you're going to end up getting a transfer that looks sort of wavy, sort of out of focus almost. So the goof proof will serve you much better in that regard. If you do need to do, um, if you do need to do digital for whatever reason, then Express Print would be the best digital to go with. And again, this is all information. I don't want you folks to think you have to memorize this right now. This is all information that our customer service reps will help guide you to when you call us up and tell us you have these types of garments. And I know I, I did forget to mention, but if through the course of this you find yourself wishing you had a copy of any of this, you'll be able to get copies of this webinar off of the Great Garmix uh, website later. So moving on, felt. Now, felt is another one of those types of garments, or um, types of fabrics, rather, that's a little bit of a chameleon. Felt can be a lot of different things. Felt traditionally, again, if you want to go back historically, uh, felt was made out of wool. Today, that's not the case quite as often. Today, felt is usually made out of synthetic fibers, a whole bunch of different synthetic fibers. And it comes in many different types. There's smooth felt and rough felt. There's coarse and soft, any color you can think of. There's high-end felt for our industry. There's lower-end felt for the craft industry, uh, rougher, less... Uh, less quality felt. So if you have somebody who is looking for felt to be decorated, it's a little bit of a catch-22. Your best bet is to take some of that felt and to heat press it. Don't even get a transfer right off the bat. Don't even go out of the way to get samples of Goof Proof and CAD Print right off the bat. First, heat press your felt at 365 degrees and see what happens. There are some types of felt that will warp or will partially melt when they're heated. There are other types of felt, as you can see in our picture here. Um, Kayla's carrying a really nifty little felt, uh, I'm not sure what that is, a purse or a bag or something. Um, there are types of felt that can be heat pressed on. So your first project, when you have a felt garment, your first project is to find out if it's the cheaper type of felt that melts, or if it's the higher quality version of felt that can be heat pressed upon. Okay. If you have polyester felt or acrylic felt, you know from our previous slides if it's polyester or acrylic felt, you can heat press on those. If it's something uh, more common and melts, then obviously you're not going to be able to heat press on that. So when you have felt, hit it on the heat press 360, 365 degrees and see what happens. If it doesn't warp or burn or melt, you're good. Goof proof or CAD print will stick to it. If you hit it at 360 and it does melt, then odds are you're going to have a problem. Linen. Linen was one of those interesting types of fabrics. Um, you don't hear about this quite as often anymore. This is something that would have been more common years ago. Every once in a blue moon, we do have a customer call us up and ask about heat pressing on linen. Sometimes we're talking tablecloths, sometimes we're talking high-end garments. That's one of the traditional uses of linen. It used to be table linens, uh, that sort of thing, tablecloths, aprons, bags. Uh, today you see it a lot in high-end clothing. Um, linen is very valued in the garment industry uh, because it does breathe very well. It remains cool in hot climates, so uh, linen is something that is seen as higher end. It's a little more expensive. Uh, so you're generally not going to see people that want to decorate it. But for those who do, um, it is definitely possible. You will usually see linen mixed with other types of fibers, like cotton. In the example here, Kyle's wearing a garment that's 42% or, sorry, 52% linen, 48% cotton. Um, and by mixing these fabrics, that makes the garment really soft. It makes it very breathable. Uh, the downside to linen is that linen does scorch and does have a little bit of a problem with temperature depending on if you're using 100% linen. Now in our example, Kyle's wearing only 52% linen, so our uh, girls in our marketing department were able to put just a regular goof-proof transfer on there. 
However, that will not be the case all the time. If you have something that is 100% linen, like a tablecloth, for example, you, maybe you're doing a benefit for a uh, country club or some kind of benefit for a cancer walk. You've got linen tablecloths that they want to heat press on, they want to decorate. If it's 100% linen, you need to be more careful and you need to use a cooler temperature. In this case, our CAD prints opaque would be best because it applies at 305 degrees. So when you're approached with a linen garment or a linen fabric that you need to decorate, what you should be, is it 100% linen or is it only partially linen? And then you can make an intelligent, educated decision from there. This was one of the most recent additions to our list, actually, um, modal is a type of garment that we just recently started encountering a little bit more and more of. Um, Modal is similar to rayon in that it's half synthetic, half natural. It's a very interesting manufacturing process, actually. Um, Modal is interesting because it's very soft. It's, it's very soft to the touch. You see it used in bathrobes, towels, really high-end uh, sheets, that kind of thing, or again, in garments. In this example, you see Kyle is wearing a fitted tee. It's a half modal, half spandex. Ooh, I'm sorry, it's partially modal, partially spandex, partially polyester. Um, so it's got a little bit of a stretch to it. Um, now, the catch with modal is that um, heat pressing per se isn't a problem. Uh, you should test it before you press it, though, only because, again, like some of the other fibers that you're going to hear about today, heat is used during the manufacturing process and heat can technically warp the fiber. It's not going to melt it, but it will change the fiber. It will make it have a little bit of a shine as opposed to being a matte finish. So a lot of times when you have a garment that has a lot of modal in it, you're going to want to hit it at 365 degrees for a moment just to see what it does, to see if it changes the finish of your garment or not. If you have enough other fibers, like in our example here, we have polyester and spandex mixed in with this shirt. Because there is enough uh, enough other fiber, you can see it didn't change the finish of Kyle's shirt. It's not shiny. It's not dull. It looks different across the whole thing. Now, if this shirt had been mostly modal and we had put that goof proof transfer on it, then you'd see a big shiny spot across Kyle's chest. So that, that's a bad thing. Um, so generally, when you're dealing with modal, you want to make sure you test it ahead of time if you have a high concentration of modal. If you have a concentration of other fabrics and maybe it's only 10, 15, 20% modal, you're going to be fine. You're not going to have to worry about that. Any type of garment will work just fine, or uh, any type of transfer, rather, will work just fine. Neoprene. Neoprene was something we started hearing about a couple years ago. Uh, Neoprene is used to make wetsuits, to make can koozies, and most recently to make laptop cases, laptop covers. Um, neoprene is really rubber. Technically, if you want to break it down chemically, neoprene is actually in the rubber family. And um, it is able to be heat pressed on. This is one of those types of uh, fibers or garments, rather, that people are generally very afraid of. We've had more than one customer tell us that they were too afraid to press on neoprene. They didn't know what to do with it. Do not shy away from these types of applications. The only thing you need to watch for when you're dealing with neoprene is to make sure that it's a type of garment or a type of fabric. Make sure it lies flat. And what I mean is um, you'll sometimes see can koozies that are made out of neoprene. Those koozies are cylindrical shaped, and they generally don't lie flat, and that will make them very, very hard to press on, if not impossible. So you want to make sure whatever neoprene you're dealing with, like, if, for example, here we have a laptop case, very cool-looking laptop case, actually, um, it lays flat. So we were able to put just a plain goof-proof transfer on it. You could also use CAD print. Uh, it comes down to whatever you like to use. Both work just fine in this case. But you just need to make sure it lies flat. Same thing technically with a wetsuit. If you had to press on a wetsuit, as long as it lies flat, which it would, you'd be fine. The only catch, again, would be the can koozies that do not lie flat. Those you would have a hard time pressing on and would not be possible because, again, they don't, they don't lie flat on your heat press. Nomex. Nomex was an interesting type of fabric that we heard about through a lot of our firefighters. 
Um, we have a lot of companies that do gear and shirts specifically for uh, safety, uh, firefighting, uh, police work, that kind of thing. And that's how we heard about Nomex. Um, this is technically a type of fiber that is owned and created by the DuPont Corporation. Um, Nomex is used in flight suits and racing suits, firefighter gear, because technically Nomex is fireproof. Okay. Now, please keep in mind that the transfers that we sell, the transfers are not necessarily fireproof. So if you're looking for fireproof garment decorating, we can't help you there. But if somebody is looking to apply on Nomex, if you're looking to decorate it, that is possible. The catch with Nomex is that it is sometimes, um, sometimes you'll find a Nomex coating with a polyester or cotton shell. The Nomex itself is difficult to uh, those fire, uh, fire resistant, radiation resistant qualities. The Nomex itself is difficult to apply on. But if you're applying to an outside shell of polyester or cotton, then you'll have much better luck. Regardless, Nomex is a type of garment that if you do find yourself applying on, you're going to want to test it first. You're going to want to take a, a spare Nomex garment an extra transfer, press on it, wash it a couple times, make sure it works okay. In our case, we did have luck with it. We have customers that do have luck with it. It's just it's something you need to experiment with a little bit ahead of time. Uh, the N-word, nylon. For a lot of years, nylon was a type of garment that did scare a lot of people away. Nylon was sort of a, a curse word for a while there. Um, today, nylon is incredibly easy to apply on. Um, again, historically, nylon was actually uh, a um, replacement for silk during World War, uh, World War II, I believe. Um, Nylon is synthetic. It's uh, sort of a relative of the plastic family, actually. If you were to look at a family tree, you'd find nylon on the plastic family tree. Um, nylon is used in just about everything. I'm sure we've all applied on it at some point or another. If you have not, do not let nylon be one of the things that scares you away. Nylon is very easy to apply on using our CAD prints opaque. Okay, Our CAD prints opaque will stick to nylon every time. Now. For those of you out there, we've had customers call us up and say, but I've put your goof proof transfers on nylon. If you have done that and you've had luck with it, then more power to you. That's great. We can't recommend it because goof proof does not always work on nylon. There are times when it will stick and there are times that it won't. It's not always a, um, a reliable product when it comes to nylon. So goof proof sticks great to everything else, but nylon is just sort of a weird fabric. Goof proof doesn't want to stick to it all the time. So if you want something that's reliable, will stick every time, we definitely recommend the CAD print, so opaque in this case. Polypropylene is another type of fabric that we've seen a lot more in the last uh, maybe two, three years. Um, and again, this is another type of garment. I know for certain that there are people out there who have shied away from printing on this. They've refused orders and turned, turned people down because they don't know what to do with polypropylene. Polypropylene is another plastic polymer. It's uh, a little different than nylon and polyester in that it's a little bit thinner. It's got a different texture to it. It's um, highly valued the past couple of years because it's very easy to make. Um, it's also recyclable and eco-friendly. The downside is it is very heat sensitive. Um, I can tell you my first experience with polypropylene years ago, five, six, seven years ago, I wasn't familiar with it. I decided, okay, I'm going to try to hit it with a group proof transfer. I'm going to see what happens. I stuck my polypropylene bag under the heat press. I hit it at 365 degrees. I lifted the press up, and the bag was gone. <laughs> it had actually melted to the top platen of the heat press. So. Um, Unfortunately, uh, that means that you're a little bit limited in what you can put on polypropylene. Our recommendation here at Transfer Express is to use our ElastiPrints product. Now, we talked about ElastiPrints a little bit earlier when we talked about stretchy garments. ElastiPrints does stretch, but it also is our lowest applying temperature at only 275 degrees. Now, polypropylene's official melting point hovers between 310 and 300 degrees. That means that sometimes our 
still apply to polypropylene. If you do want to use a CAD print on a polypropylene bag, test it ahead of time. Hit your bag at 305 degrees and see what it does. Otherwise, our recommendation, like you can see Kayla carrying here in the picture, our recommendation is the ElastiPrint. Oops. There we go. Uh, another very recent addition to this list is polystyrene. Polystyrene is truly a plastic polymer. It's not a relative of the plastic family like I said about the last two. Polystyrene is actually plastic. You'll find polystyrene used in yogurt cups, disposable cutlery, CD cases. Um, it is truly a plastic. However, manufacturers in our industry have recently started using polystyrene to make very cheap bags, tote bags, uh, plastic bags, display bags, that kind of thing. Um, polystyrene is relatively dangerous. It is considered to be a fire hazard because polystyrene melts at a very low temperature and it is not a good idea to heat press on. It will not withstand. If you have a customer who brings you polystyrene bags or they want polystyrene bags, you have to use a non-apparel product. You do have to use stickers to apply on. But as you can see in the photograph here, Kayla's holding a polystyrene bag that does have a sticker on it. Looks perfectly fine. So it is possible to decorate on polystyrene. You just have to be careful. Do not heat press it. It will melt and create a mess. Here's another interesting uh, vocabulary word that everyone has heard at some point or another, and we have gotten a lot of phone calls about this over the years, PVC coating. PVC refers to polyvinyl chloride. Um, today, PVC is something that's used in just about everything. You see PVC in ceiling tiles, and water pipes. Um, PVC in our industry, in the garment industry, PVC is used to coat a garment and make it waterproof. Make it so that water slides off, make it so that water does not absorb very easily. And you will generally find this in outerwear and backpacks. Now in the example here you see Kyle holding a nylon bag that has been coated with PVC. Do not be afraid of those letters. Uh, we've had plenty of customers call us in a panic thinking that if I've got a PVC bag, I'm not going to be able to apply on this, am I? It will apply perfectly fine. Our CAD print opaque will stick to it without a problem. So again, PVC is one of those things I, I want everyone to come out of this webinar today not being afraid of that. If you hear PVC coating, it's okay, it's fine. You can decorate that without a problem. Rayon is another interesting type of garment. Rayon is kind of cool for me. I'm a little bit of a nerd, so rayon's cool because it's partially synthetic. It's partially natural. Um, rayon is cool because it's, it's a silk substitute. It, it's very soft. It's very, very cool to the touch. Um, we see a lot of rayon in the past couple of years because manufacturers did start mixing it with cotton during the cotton shortage of 2010. So you saw a lot of garments during that time that came out that were half rayon, half cotton. Um, rayon is a little bit heat sensitive, but not so much that you have to worry about heat pressing on it. As you can see in the uh, the uh, high end shirt here that Kyle's wearing, we got him all fancied up. Um, you see that he does have a goof proof transfer pressed onto it. This garment is partially rayon, partially cotton. Now, if you have a garment that is a hundred percent rayon, that I would recommend testing ahead of time. You don't often see those, though. You don't see a lot of 100% rayon garments anymore. This day and age, most of them are mixed with cotton. So like you see in the picture here, when it's mixed with cotton, rayon's perfectly fine. It's not something you need to worry about. If you had 100%, though, that's when I would test your garment ahead of time, hit it at 360 degrees, see what it does. Here's a couple more. You heard me mention these a little bit earlier. Satin, sateen, and taffeta. These are three vocabulary words that, again, they don't mean a lot by themselves because sateen, satin, and taffeta are made out of either polyester, silk, nylon, or other materials. These three words just refer to the weave of a garment. Okay? Uh, so, for example, sateen can be woven out of cotton or rayon. Okay, 
Satin, on the other hand, is woven from silk, nylon, or polyester. The lesson I want everyone to learn from this is that if you have a customer that approaches you and says, hey, I have these satin garments that need to be decorated. Okay, it's satin, but is it polyester satin? Is it nylon satin? Is it silk satin? What type of satin, sateen, or taffeta is it? As you can see in the pictures here, you can decorate those materials. It's not a problem. You just first have to get past the vocabulary word and find out what type of fabric is it. Okay? So in the examples here, you see that our polyester spandex sateen, because it, it has spandex in it, it has a little bit of a stretch to it, we did put the CAD print on it. And the uh, pink number at the top here, you see it is 100% polyester satin. Since it's just polyester, we can use our screen print on that, no problem. So again, it all comes down to whether you're dealing with polyester or nylon or rayon. You get down to the bare bones of the garment and you make a decision based on that type of fiber. There we go. Silk. Now, silk is a very high-end fabric. We do not have a lot of people looking to decorate on silk. It does happen from time to time. And when you do have that random customer that does walk into your shop and want to decorate it, we don't want you to refuse that because it is possible to decorate on silk. Now, silk is incredibly expensive because of the manufacturing process, the silkworms and such. It is very expensive to make. It's also so very interesting if you're looking for a part of our industry that's sort of fun to read up on. Um, the catch with silk is it can be temperature sensitive. It can be difficult to heat press on. However, you can see from our picture here, and kudos to Stephanie on our marketing department for figuring this one out, um, the silk shirt that she did happen to come across, it is 100% silk, and it was heat pressed on. Our goof proof transfer stuck to it just fine. There was no warping or scarring or scorching of the garment. If you have a customer that is interested in decorating a silk shirt or silk ties, heat press it, hit it at 360 degrees for a couple seconds, and see what it does. As long as it doesn't scorch, uh, then either the CAD print or the screen print will apply just fine. Spandex. Spandex is another fun transfer or uh, fun garment. Here, spandex. Um, you need to not be afraid. We've had plenty of customers, again, people don't like to press on it, people are afraid to press on it, what do I put on it, how do I handle spandex? Um, other words you'll hear sometimes in place of spandex are the words elastine, lycra, and elaspan. They all mean the same thing, they all mean spandex. Spandex is often mixed with other synthetic fibers because spandex is stain resistant, it's strong, it's tensile, it's water resistant, it's color fast. Um, so you'll oftentimes find polyester spandex or uh, other mixtures you've seen throughout the webinar. Cotton spandex in the case of the tank top you're looking at here. The catch with spandex is because of the stretchiness of it, you need to use a transfer that will stretch just as much as the spandex will. And in this case, you want to go with our CAD prints opaque. Our elasti prints do not stretch quite enough. So when you do have something that spandex or it has a high concentration of spandex, you want to use CAD prints opaque. And coming up on the end here, we've got wool. Wool is a blanket term. Wool can refer to sheep. Uh, wool can refer to rabbits. It can refer to any garment or uh, any fiber that has been obtained by cutting it or shearing it off an animal. Uh, wool is very high-end. It's valued because it does retain heat very nicely. It insulates well, so you'll oftentimes find it in, in uh, socks, hats, and coats. Uh, blankets are another popular thing, and gear for hunters. If you have had hunters come into your shop, want anything uh, decorated upon, you'll find wool in there generally. Um, wool should be treated just like cotton. It's very easy to heat press on. It's not sensitive. It should be uh, heat pressed on just like cotton. So screen print, CAD print, uh, any of our products will work just fine with any type of wool. Now, you do need to be careful if you, uh, 
like in the example here, you see Kyle's wearing um, a neat combination, actually. It's partially wool, partially spandex, and partially nylon. Because of that spandex and that nylon, this shirt is a tiny bit stretchy, and it does have a little bit of nylon in it. We chose to use our CAD prints just to be safe. But otherwise, wool is not something you should be afraid of. Wool can be decorated upon just like normal. All right, folks. I know I, I sped a little bit through the last couple slides there because we are coming up on a time limit here. But um, thank you, everybody, for attending. I hope everyone got a lot out of this webinar. Um, if I didn't answer your questions, we will email you individually with answers to those questions. Um, the next webinar, if anyone is interested, is It's Greek to Me. It's being presented next Tuesday by Stalls ID Direct. For those of you interested, you're welcome to join me on July 12th. I'll be presenting Custom Transfers, the Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Um, Jody, if you're with us, are there any questions we can answer quickly? Um, let's see here. I did see one that was, um, one attendee was wondering about the foam insulation inside of a koozie when you were talking about applying to the koozies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, uh, the foam insides, I have had people ask about melting temperatures, that sort of thing. The foam is not a problem. As long as your koozie lies flat, that's your most important concern in terms of a koozie. The foam insides will be perfectly fine. They don't melt. They don't do anything funky. Just make sure your koozie lies flat and can be heat pressed upon. And does Teflon coating affect decorating? Teflon coating does, actually. Um, Teflon coated garments are not something you see a heck of a lot of. They are out there. If you have a garment that is Teflon coated, that is something we recommend testing first because it can prevent adhesion depending on the product. So if you do have a Teflon coated garment, give us a call, get a sample of Goof Proof, a sample of CAD print, and see if they work for you. Um, I personally have had mixed results with Teflon coated garments, so you got to be careful with those. Okay. And there's actually several questions coming in. So we may have to answer those after, and you will receive an individual. Um, but I did have a couple questions about getting the PDF of this webinar and also uh, when the webinar will be available. And the webinar uh, PDF will be available in the webinar wrap-up, um, posted by the end of today. Usually by 5 o'clock it's been posted. And the archive um, video that you can watch and re-watch will be available in the morning. On, here on Gar Great Garment and Graphics. Thank you for throwing that out there. I actually I forgot about covering that at the very beginning. So good <laughs> questions, everybody. Um, uh, thank you, Jody, for reading off those questions. Everyone else whose questions are coming in, we will email you individually later today. Our marketing department is standing by as I am, and we will be happy to answer your questions. Um, in the meantime, I look forward to talking to all of you again on July 12th. Make sure to join me for Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Custom Transfers. Otherwise, thank you so much for everybody for attending today. I know we went a little bit over. I am so sorry about that. And uh, have a fantastic rest of your day, wherever it may be. And thank you so much for joining us, Andy. Great webinar. Have a great day. Thanks, Jody. You too. Thank you.